Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another how to tie fishing knots. In this series, today's knot is the double jig setup, probably one of my favorite when you're vertically jigging. It allows you to present multiple baits, different colors at different depth levels. It's a pretty simple knot, it's just two loop knots, that's all it is. So let me just walk you through how I tie that on. I'm going to tie them about six to eight inches apart. Then I'm going to set up on some brush piles and kind of vertically jig these or maybe flip these out away from the boat. I do not recommend casting these. I've done it in the past. The problems I run into is one of the jigs will actually get caught in the loop of the second jig, so I don't recommend it. Um, also, keep in mind when you're tying these on or when you're choosing your jig head, the lighter jig goes on top, heavier jig goes on bottom, or if they're the same weight, that's fine too. The problem is if you put the heavier jig on top, that one might fall faster. So I'm gonna show you how to tie that up real quick, and then we're gonna hook up some Euro Tackle. This is, these are the B-Vibe Euro Tackle lures. This is the Fire Tiger pattern, and I'm also gonna throw on a Black and Chartreuse pattern as well over some brush piles right behind me here, so let's do it. All right, so to tie on the double jig setup, or the double jig crappie rig, it's very simple. It's just gonna be two loop knots on both jigs. Now, like I said before, or if I haven't said it already, make sure they're either the same weights or make sure the lower jig or the, the jig lower down on the line is heavier than the top jig. This will help prevent any tangles. All right, so let's get started tying these on. So these are both 1 16th ounce jig heads. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna put the first one on, sliding it up the line. Doesn't matter how far, doesn't matter how far. And then you're going to take the second one and we're going to tie our first loop knot. So you're going to put the uh, line through the eyelet, pull out about four to five inches of line. So it's going to look like that. And now you're going to pinch the tag end and the main line with, this is going to be my left hand, and then you're going to pinch both lines with your other hand and your jig is going to hang down. See how it's about inch and a half, two inches. If you want a longer loop, raise it up a little bit and let that jig hang down. See that's about three inches of hang from where I'm going to wrap this, start to wrap the knot. Then all you're going to do is you're going to flip the jig around where the line you got pinched here three, four, five times. And then you got a, a loop formed in my right hand. And then I'm going to take the jig, slide the hook through that loop. That, that loop is going to go all the way over the jig head. And I'm going to grab the tag end of the line and the main line. I'm going to slowly pull tight. At this point, you're going to want to wet the knot. And then slowly pull tight. And that is loop knot number one. And that is loop knot number one. Now we got our other jig here that we slid up the line. The trick is to pinch the line off where you actually want the knot to be. So I got about a foot between the jigs right here. I think that's good. I'm going to fold the line over right here. Slide my fingers down with both lines pinched. And then I'm gonna grab closer to the jig head, see how it's hanging down. And I'm gonna flip it over this pinched line three or four or five times. And there we go, it's folded over. And there we go, we got our jig head flipped over. So now we got our loop formed, we're gonna take the jig head Put that hook all the way through the loop and then the loop all the way over the top of the jig head. And slowly pull the jig head while you're pinching both the main line and the tag line. You probably want to wet this knot as well. And there you go. You got your two loop knots. Double jig setup. All right, let's get on the water and uh, show you how this thing works. All right, so here's the double jig setup. I have a chartreuse. One six, they're both 1 16th ounce jig heads, chartreuse on the bottom. Got the uh, black and green B vibe on the bottom, and then the pink and chartreuse. That got slipped down. Make sure you get it all the way over that barb. 
pink and chartreuse jig on the top with the uh, fire tiger pattern. So I got a bunch of different brush piles. I'm just gonna kind of flip this out in front because I know there's two separate brush piles between me. And these fall pretty quick, obviously. You got an eighth, an eighth ounce worth of jigs on there, or weight of jigs on there. So you don't need to let it fall too much. There he is. Oh, I think I got, I think I'm doubled up already. Or nope, that's just a big crappie. <laughs> there we go, double jig setup, got it done. Right off the bat. That's a big fish, wow. Look at that guy, thought I had two on. Nope, just a solid, solid fish. Let's see what he is. Oh, he's just shy of 12, there we go. see if there's more down there Ooh. fire tiger beaver I've got it done Wow so I'm just gonna flip it out same spot <laughs> hopefully there's a big school of those guys ah oh, it feels good to catch some 12 inch northern Wisconsin crappie it really does all I'm do all I'm doing is just letting this thing pendulum back to the boat because there's two brush piles I'm trying to split them. Right now these crappie, some of the crappie are sitting right on the brush piles. Some of them are really suspended and kind of chasing bait fish. That guy, I don't know where he was. You can always pop it back to the boat. You're just barely lifting your rod tip about a six inches to a foot. Kind of let him fall and then slowly reeling in that slack. If you get on top of the brush piles and if you can get some fish that are just holding on those brush piles, you can just vertically jig it. See if those fish kind of chase it up the water column. Ooh. There he is. Uh, two of them felt like a big one, but I just got two. This is the beauty of those double rig setups. You can double up just like that. They're not big fish though, unfortunately. They're not that 12 incher that we were looking for. You can go back. And you can go back. See you, buddy. There he is. I don't, ooh. I think I'm doubled up again. I think I was doubled up for a while there. This isn't, I mean, that's still, that's probably a 10 and a half inch fish. I'm gonna put him on the measuring tape, but it's not the uh, 12 we were looking for. Not the big mama. They're liking this fire tiger in pink pattern though. And again, I'm just flipping it out over that brush pile. What in the hell? And kind of letting it pendulum back towards the boat. Oh, I'm gonna see what this guy is. I mean, yeah, he's another 10 incher. Hmm, but uh, I'm gonna let this guy go. There he is. Dang it, I felt him. Oh no, I'm stuck in the brush pile. I let it go too deep. So one thing about, well hopefully, hopefully, oh. Oh, I have a fish on. Not a big one though. I bet he, I bet he ran with it into that brush pile. I bet that's what he did. I can let it drop for about three and a half seconds and then I gotta start reeling it otherwise it's gonna 
catch that brush pile, I think. Oh, do I still have a fish? What am I doing here? Yep, I still do. Dang, these are the dinks. Where's the big girl at? It's amazing. I literally cast it in the same spot I caught that big fish and then I just caught a four inch one, three fish later. It just shows how nomadic some of these crappie are right now, midsummer is chasing bait fish. A school of big ones could be half, halfway across the lake by now, but hopefully they're still around here. You'd think there's a ton of brush piles. Oh, there's fish. The double jig setup does it. See you, buddy. Easy release. Small guy, easy release. This is why it's my favorite setup. I can fish two different style baits or two different color baits, two different depths. Really don't need to fish that different depths, but it's only six, seven, eight inches apart. But when you get into the school, man, do they like it. And they're hitting, that one was the bottom jig, but the bigger ones have come on the top jig. Oh, there it is. There they are. Come on. Somebody hit it. There he is. Uh, I think I've doubled up. Nope. Those are not the fish I want. That seems to be the active brush pile. Three different kind of schools have been there. There's some 10 inch fish. There's that big one. I've caught a bunch of tiny ones. So for whatever reason, that brush pile is the active one. I have no idea why. I think these are all dropped in the same year, so. Hmm, curious, what do you think? Why would that be the active brush pile? There's like 15 of them off this point. I mean, relatively same amount, they're relatively in the same depth of water. I mean, 20, 22 feet. Oh, and that would be, that would be the brush pile. Oh, got that one, oh, there we go, popped it loose. Oh, wow, right on the drop. Is that one, is that two? Oh, it feels like a tiny one. That's what it feels like. I don't even know how many fish that is. The double jig rig. Oh, I just broke my own rule, casted it. There's one. I think these are tiny guys. Yeah, they are not, oh, they're not big fish. I have a reason, I, like I know why they're on this end of the lake. The wind is all pushing all the bait fish towards this side. I'm on the south end of the lake, wind's out of the north right now. There they are. There's a, there's a fish. And that is why the double jig rig is effective. That's gonna wrap it up on this video. Oh, came flying off. See, now we're back to dinks. Where's the big, big mama's at? So as you can see, the double jig rig is very effective, both in catching numbers and uh, catching some big fish. That was just, that was about 11 and a half, 11 and three quarter, just shy of 12. But yeah, it's, uh, 
fairly simple setup because it's only two loop knots. So there's there's my one there's my one jig and jig number two flying through the frame right now. Very simple to use. Try it out. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. If you got any comments or questions that I didn't get to in the YouTube and it's like urgent, go ahead, follow me on Facebook or Instagram and message me on those. I get back to those really quick, those messages super fast. Appreciate you watching. If you're new here, click that subscribe button, click the bell. Hope you try out this knot. Again, let me know how it goes for you. We'll see you next time.